From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. We are starting this week off with two first alert weather days. There is a 20% chance today and tomorrow we could see some isolated thunderstorms. It's low odds, but it's so unusual to have this happen in June. We're going to raise the awareness level and add some context and discussion on just how likely this is. Coming up in the first alert forecast. And Darren, there's a state investigation underway after 16 migrants were dropped off in Sacramento from Florida. How they get there and why California leaders are calling this a state sanctioned kidnapping. Plus, it's being called a truly historic deal. The agreement reached between a major guild and Hollywood's top studios and streamers. Gianna. And in the San Jose, a deadly crash has shut down an intersection. Also, we're tracking brake lights at the Bay Bridge. I'll have your top traffic trouble spots coming up. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on your Monday morning. It's a little gray outside this morning for you. A little bit of that June gloom that we're seeing, but we do have some changes that are possible. That's what Darren Peck is tracking on this first alert weather day. Good example about this morning, because even though the next two days are first alert weather days, this day starts out and there's nothing different about it. We've got the marine layer. It's pretty normal. It's June gloom. It's totally normal. And what's not normal about the next two days is a small 20% chance of isolated thunderstorms, which will show up through the afternoon today and more likely perhaps tomorrow for the first half of the day. If you look at First Alert Doppler, you can see there are showers coming out of the Sierra now. But if we go to the big picture, here's why we've got a First Alert day today and tomorrow. Watch what happens here. Occasional possibility for some of those showers to get rotated through the bay. And not only that, but within that possibility, some of that could come in the form of an isolated thunderstorm. And it's June here. This doesn't happen often in June. It does happen. It can, but it's rare. So we don't want anybody to get caught off guard by this. In the meantime, look at the start of the day from the top of Mount Diablo. For Walnut Creek, that looks totally normal. A little bit of marine layer coming overhead. It's 53 degrees there right now. And if we use Walnut Creek as the example of how this day is going to go with our warm-up as we watch a beautiful sunrise from the top of the hills, above the peninsula. Uh, Walnut Creek, your number today goes to the low 70s. It's a little below average and it is notably cooler than you were over the weekend. That's the other thing about this pattern shift. In addition to focusing on this chance for isolated thunderstorms, there is about a 10 to 15 degree cool down for most of us who are inland. And all that's really doing is it's bringing you back down to average because you were quite above that going into uh, the last part of the weekend. There's that isolated thunderstorm chance showing up there. I'll have more on that coming up in the complete first solar forecast in a bit. For now, Gianna, anything going on on the drive? Yeah, it's getting busy out there, Darren. Unfortunately, we've got a couple things to look out for if you are commuting through San Jose this morning. So an early start to your commute. If you're headed on northbound 101, a lot of brake lights there because of an earlier trouble spot right at 880. And I do want to focus on surface streets as well. If you typically take Meridian for your morning commute, it is shut down in both directions between Redmond Avenue and Oak Glen. Sadly, this is due to a deadly crash where a vehicle hit a tree. That car then caught fire. The investigation is under Way. So they've shut down that intersection for several blocks through there. So try to use an alternate or avoid the area if you can. But North 101 also busy right at that 880 connector. That's because of an earlier grass fire on 880 itself. At one point they had all lanes shut down on 880. Everything has now been reopened and they've got a handle on everything, but still pretty slow. North 101 as you head through San Jose. Justin. Developing story this morning now, Gianna, there is a state investigation into how more than a dozen asylum seekers were dropped off in Sacramento without any warning. Attorney General Rob Bonta says Florida Governor Ron DeSantis flew them in on a private jet from Texas. Bonta and Governor Gavin Newsom are calling it a state sanctioned kidnapping. It's very strange. At best, it's potentially illegal. It could violate criminal laws. It could violate civil laws. So we're continuing our investigation. We'll get to the bottom of that. Bonta says 16 asylum seekers were flown into Sacramento Friday night by a Florida state contractor. The migrants are from Venezuela and Colombia. They were promised work if they boarded the plane, but they were then left outside the Catholic Diocese of Sacramento with nothing. There's a group in Sacramento helping to care for the migrants. They're human beings. They're people with families. Um, there's some young people, you know, that are just trying to support or make a life for themselves. There's people who left their children behind in this group. Last year, DeSantis claimed credit for flying a group of migrants from Texas to Martha's Vineyard using that same contractor. Meanwhile, the group helping the asylum seekers says that they have court dates soon in other parts of the country that they may have to miss. Amanda. 
Well, the Directors Guild of America has reached a tentative agreement with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. This comes as the Writers Guild of America remains on strike. Lori Perez talked to an expert about this latest move and what it means for the strike industry going forward. everything within our unions and among our unions and we have that we feel that that was the writers guild president two weeks ago hailing solidarity among writers directors and actors as a tool to hold the studios accountable but two weeks later the directors guild of america announced saturday it has reached a deal on a new contract with the alliance of motion picture and television producers or amptp so what does that mean for the others? Jonathan Handel is an entertainment attorney and journalist. Whether it will help end the writer's strike and or preempt an actor's strike, those are different questions. The Actors Guild seems to answer that in a message to its members, saying in part, our bargaining strategy has never relied upon nor been dependent on the outcome or status of any other union's negotiations. A response echoed by the striking writers union, which said the AMPTP divide and conquer strategy won't work this time. The AMPTP will not be able to negotiate a deal with anyone but us, which Handel says adds up to whether the director's deal really creates a pathway to getting a deal done with the actors or whether we'll see them go on strike come July 1st is an open question. He says the directors did make gains. The DGA released highlights of the tentative deal, including wage increases, a new structure to pay foreign residuals, and limits on the use of artificial intelligence. Some issues are the same, but Handel says writers and actors have other priorities and more power. Reality is that if the actors go out on strike, and the writers are out on strike, that shuts the industry down completely. There's nothing to direct. And so whether or not the directors had reached a deal or went out on strike or not becomes almost, uh, I wouldn't say superfluous, but be becomes secondary. Let's look at our top stories now. A sonic boom rattled the Washington, D.C. area Sunday after F-16 fighter jets were scrambled to check out an unresponsive aircraft. The plane was making an unauthorized flight near the D.C. metro area, which is restricted airspace. The small Cessna crashed in Virginia. President Biden was briefed on the incident late Sunday. Officials say the F-16s did not take down the aircraft. Former Vice President Mike Pence and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are expected to jump into the GOP primary race this week. It comes as attention is turning to the U.S. economy and concern about a potential recession later this year. Bank of America CEO said on Face the Nation they are expecting a mild recession in the third or fourth quarter. That is despite the latest jobs numbers showing employers added more than 330,000 new jobs in May. And tensions have increased between the U.S. and China over Taiwan. That's after this video right here showed a Chinese warship speeding up, coming within 150 yards of hitting an American missile destroyer in the Taiwan Strait. The Chinese ship even called the vessel, ordering it to move or there would be a collision. The American ship slowed to avoid a crash. It comes after a Chinese fighter jet in the same region flew so close to a U.S. military plane that it created turbulence. Apple is about to hold one of its biggest events in almost a decade to launch a new product that could revolutionize tech. The company's Worldwide Developers Conference kicks off this morning in Cupertino. Along with updates for every product, Apple is expected to introduce a highly anticipated mixed reality headset that offers both virtual and augmented reality. It overlays virtual images on live video of the real world. The AR VR headset would be Apple's biggest product launch since the Apple Watch in 2015. And we just checked, Apple's online store is down ahead of the potential new product launch. This is normal for Apple. Right now, the homepage just shows a warped Apple logo, hinting toward that potential augmented or virtual reality headset. We'll find out in just a few hours. The keynote kicks off at 10 a.m.